I have here with me today Charlie Chad, who is Chief Executive Officer of Good Life Plus. Today is a big day in the life of Good Life Plus because they've come to the public marketplace for a quotation through Aquis Stock Exchange to raise between 1.4 and 1.7 million. Charlie, welcome. First and foremost, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you've arrived at this day. Yeah, so my name is Charlie. I'm the founder and CEO of Good Life Plus. Um, my background is I studied economics at the University of Nottingham. I came out and went into residential uh, development. Whilst I was at TLS Investments, which was a development practice, I studied a master's in real estate and finance, which was on my weekends, which was fun, as you can imagine. Um, graduated with distinction, and soon after that, I launched a co-working space in London Bridge. So it was a big, empty warehouse. We fitted it out as cheaply as possible, um, while still nicely enough to attract uh, all the best startups. So we packed that out, ran it for, we had a five-year lease. It was profitable from year one onwards. And in the final year of the lease, I came up with the concept of uh, Good Life Plus. My brother, Joseph, who's the co-founder, um, who I can give you a bit of detail on later, he was running a luxury car dealership called Prestige Cars Kemp. He was doing really well. And we thought we can create an opportunity here for people to win prizes that they otherwise couldn't afford, whilst also offering an opportunity to save. Um, and the kind of the initial concept was created and the rest of it is history. I must say though, the innovative reward sector or lottery sector is a far cry from uh, what you were doing before. So tell us how that actually came about. And, you know, it's, it's interesting if you could provide us with some data. And by the data, I don't mean so much about your own company, but how big is the lottery market, A, globally, and B, in the United Kingdom? Yeah, it's, it, it's massive. I think uh, 2021, it was valued at over 260 billion. That's just the lottery market, let alone kind of the rewards and uh, membership sector. So the opportunity arose because we saw uh, the likes of, say, the postcode lottery. Uh, they turned over 550 million in the UK in 2022. And we was looking at kind of that lottery experience, even the national lottery is very transactional. The customer goes into the store, they spend two pounds on a ticket, mm -hmm. they watch a TV show that looks like it's from the 80s and 99.9% .9 of the time, they don't win anything. They walk away with nothing. So we thought there's an opportunity here to create some more value. Can we create a product whereby even if the customer doesn't win a main prize, they still walk away a winner? So we kind of came up with this concept of Good Life Plus where it's a low cost monthly membership, starts at £11.99. And with that, members get entered to win a luxury prize every single day. So they can tune in at 7 p.m. every night. There's a live stream on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, on the website, and they can actually interact with the presenters. They can see the winner being chosen. But more than that, they also get access to hundreds of rewards. So discounts and deals, whether that's Zizis, Pizza Express, Domino's, theme parks, theaters, and we've got tons more rewards as we get bigger and bigger that are coming out in 2024. You're not worried about competition, are you? The way you're talking. You're what I call nicely enthusiastic and very confident. And I think that's wonderful because there's a pretty fierce competition out there. Yeah, well, we think we're offering something that's kind of uh, a, a fresh product mm -hmm. and a fresh spin on uh, kind of the reinventing the traditional winning experience so that, you know, we want to make it a no-brainer for customers to be a Good Life member. We want them to be able to save far more than their monthly membership fee. Mm -hmm with their membership, and we really think of ourselves as an entertainment-focused subscription rather than a lottery or a prize draw. And yes, I noticed you changed the terminology a bit. That's quite, <laughs> I think that's quite sensible. <laughs> yeah. Now, tell me, um, I imagine that marketing plays a pretty significant part of your budget in your you know, embryonic stage of the growth of your business. Mm -hmm. And also, you probably attach considerable importance to growth of subscribers. Would I be about right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the last 12 months, uh, we've grown from 8,000 subscribers uh, to 21,000 active subscribers, mm -hmm. and we've done that on a relatively limited budget. So this listing process is going to provide us with the funds to really put our foot down. This isn't a business that's searching for product market fit. We're not going to spend the next 12 months trying to kind of find product market fit. We've got product market fit. Our acquisition cost, the lifetime value ratio is mm -hmm. very strong. It's continuously improving. And we've got a fantastic team. You know, we've got 
Ian McCaig is one of our advisors. He's the founder and CEO of Fit. It's the number one digital fitness app in the UK. We've got David Ivey, who scaled a massive uh, dot digital. It's one of the big success stories name. Victor Chandler, Bet Victor, Mark Blanford, SportingBet.com. So we've got people who have been there and done, done it and scaled brands into household names in the UK. And it's really about putting our foot down now and taking as much market share as possible. With that broad church of advisors and investors, and I think that's the best way of putting it, yep. you, do you aspire beyond what I call the innovative areas that you've discussed to broaden the business in other areas? Yeah, definitely. We, we've always got our eyes open, especially on the reward side of the business, as to how we can improve the product and add more value for the customers. As I said, we, we don't like to think of ourselves solely as a, a prize draw business or a lottery no. business. This is an entertainment product. So how can we pack as much entertainment, excitement and enrichment, uh, that's kind of our mission, into the membership um, for, our, for the UK consumer? So if the opportunity arises, um, it becomes apparent that there's some way we can expand the company, especially on the rewards front, we will obviously uh, take a serious look. But it also strikes me that this is a word of mouth business as well, is that if people are excited by what you're doing, they're going to tell their friends. They don't always have to rely on the internet and going onto the website. And I imagine word of mouth and the way they're treated as customers and clients is quite important in your development. Yeah, definitely. Um, you only have to look at our Trustpilot rating to see that we're uh, rated extremely highly. We get thousands of five-star reviews. Um, and we believe that's because we pack so much value into the membership. And we have that community. We have hundreds of thousands of followers across our social media channels, thousands tuning in to the live draws, communicating with the presenters. So there's very much kind of community vibe there. And we, we plan on uh, really expanding that. Charlie, I have to ask, ask you this question, and forgive me, it's one really made out of uh, lack of knowledge, but if there were a downturn in the economy, which cannot necessarily be ruled out, do you think, despite the fact that you have subscribers rather than people who walk into a shop and buy their lottery tickets or whatever it is every day, do you think that that would affect the turnover of your business? I notice always, and have done in the past over the last 25 years, it's not been the case with gambling because the corals, the labrooks, and the hills of this world, normally in torrid times, have done pretty well. What do you reckon the scope is with you? Yeah, I, I, we have the kind of feeling that we're in a very fortunate position, um, whereby you know we have that kind of element of a lottery prize mm -hmm. draw business where people want to win, and that sector typically does do very well in a downturn. But even better than that, we also have all the rewards and discounts and deals. Um, and you struggle to find sectors that do do well in downturns, but those two specifically do. So we've combined those two. And in times where, you know, people don't have much disposable income, they are looking for the opportunity to kind of escape and win, uh, which is kind of the lottery prize element. But they're also looking for the opportunity to save. And we provide that of all the kind of the rewards, discounts and deals. So, you know, the proof is kind of in the traction over the last 12 months. We've been operating in uh, kind of high interest rates, cost yep. of living crisis, yep. and we've been scaling um, very quickly a very limited fund. So it's not a concern of ours, uh, quite the opposite. We think now is the perfect time for the business. Maybe it just might chip in at this moment is that your subscribers in the course of the last, say, six months, one year, two years, have they grown enormously? I imagine they have, haven't they? Yeah, so we've grown from 8,000 uh, subscribers this time last year uh, to over 21,000 active subscribers. Um, and we've done that with very kind of limited funding. You know, this is the first time post listing we're going to have a substantial amount of funding to expand. So we're anticipating high growth. That's really encouraging. <laughs> um, I have to say that I'm pretty impressed with the constitution of your board. I mean, Keith Harris, who's obviously very well known in the city, he's former chairman of Seymour Pierce. He's been, uh, Seymour Pierce, for those who don't know, it was one of the best stockbrokers in London for bringing smaller companies to the public's notice, and they did a fantastic job over the years. He's also done an awful lot of financing for football, and so he, he comes with a you know a good CV in terms of contributing to your business. Um, what I'd like to know is that, tell us a little bit about your brother Joseph, or is he Joe, and a little bit about John Gordon, so that we know exactly the contribution that they make to your business. Yeah, definitely. So. Joseph uh, studied economics at the University of Exeter. He came out, he went to RBS, he then moved to JP Morgan, 
he took the brave decision to quit JP Morgan in his early 20s. He, wow. found, he founded Prestige Cars Kemp. Um, he scaled it to 70 staff, 60 million annual turnover. Um, so quite the track record yeah. uh, for someone who's 33. Um, and then we've got John Gordon, uh, CEO and founder of Incentive Games. So that's the number one uh, free-to-play gaming software provider in the world. Um, work with Bet365, LiveScore, FanDuel, and he's an expert in acquisition and retention. So you can see where he would add a lot of value you, to the business. You've certainly ticked all the boxes. Yeah, you? definitely, definitely. No, I mean that is very, very impressive. I mean, which brings me to another sort of add-on question in that area. I think is that. What's your staff levels now and where do you think they might be in, say, two years' time or is it impossible to gauge? Yeah, so we have 14 uh, full-time members of staff currently mm-hmm. um, and we have about 10 kind of freelancers who are doing two, two to three days a week. But the beauty of this business is it, it can remain relatively lean. It's not a business where, you know, if we hopefully achieve our goals and kind of get into the hundreds of millions uh, we're going to need 100, 200 members of staff. Technology this... does it for you, doesn't it? Exactly that. Exactly that. Yeah, yep. I'm not surprised. Now, it's interesting to hear you say that. Um, <clears throat> some of the shareholders you've got, again, impressed me great. You mentioned before Sporting Bet, Mark Blanford's family. I mean, Sporting Bet was bought eventually by GBC, which then became Entain. So that covers you in a huge spectrum area, which I think is absolutely vital and also adds to the... Uh, level that you need in terms of technology. Um, Do these shareholders tend to be contributors as well as supportive? And in the future, do you presumably, like most small companies, would need to broaden your shareholder base? I think one of the major problems with smaller companies, in my opinion, in my experience over the years, is they lack liquidity when it's a Mm -hmm. damn good company because they've got too few shareholders. They don't get the rewards that they deserve. Your mm-hmm. views on that, please, Charlie. Yeah, I think Mark's obviously a great addition uh, as an investor, but yeah. also uh, someone who we can lean on uh, to get advice. He's yeah. been there, he's done that. We've also got uh, Victor Chandler, uh, who's the founder of Bet Victor. Uh, again, anytime we want to pick up the phone to Victor, he's available. Ian McCaig, who I mentioned, the founder of Fit. Um, so you may have seen them, they're partnered with Sky, Samsung. And then we've got David Ivey, the founder of Dot Digital as well. So again, one of the big success stories on AIM over the last uh, two decades. So we, we are surrounded by people who have kind of been there and scaled these businesses into household names. And I think one of the advantages that we've got is, this is a great retail story. Uh, we, we should get it into the position where we've got hundreds of thousands of uh, members and we're well known in the UK. And I think that's really gonna help with uh, liquidity similar to some of the big success stories like Boohoo.com or Asos. Um, I anticipate that we can be that next big success story. Well, I'm, I must say I'm very excited on your behalf and I think it sounds really interesting. Just finally, um, a, a question which I'm going to ask is that I get the impression that the raising of this 1.4 to 1.7 million is sufficient to see you through for the next few months. Mm. Um, but I assume, or perhaps I shouldn't assume, May I ask you whether you have all your, how can I put it, balls in order? Uh, if you need to raise further money, would you go back to Aquis? Would you try and expand with your existing shareholders? Just give me a rough idea. Because I do, personally, from where I come from, uh, which is, of course, nothing to do with what you're doing, I absolutely think a really good shareholder register is very important. Yeah, definitely. I, look, our biggest cost is uh, marketing and we want to go for maximum market share. So, yes, we have got enough funds uh, to last us Good. for the foreseeable future. Um, but there may be an opportunity to kind of turbocharge this, um, you know, over the next kind of 12 to 18 months. So if the right names uh, come into the picture and kind of want to put their throw the hat into the ring and, and back us, mm-hmm. yeah, we'd, we'd of course have that conversation. At the same time, some of the investors mentioned are also keen to hopefully follow up as up well. Up the so, as they say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Good. I mean, final question, but, and it's probably futuristic, but it is important, I think, because I think you've got that sort of mentality that you're interested in the whole spectrum of entertainment. Would you ever be in an acquisitive frame of mind, i.e. would you buy other companies that weren't necessarily doing the same as you were doing but might add value uh, to your company and and therefore 
enhance its value to shareholders in the future? Yeah, I look, it's not currently on the current roadmap. However, we are all about packing as much value as possible into our membership. So if there was a company that offered certain rewards and it became apparent that they could do something that we couldn't do, and we had an opportunity to acquire that company uh, for a, a fair price, definitely we would consider it if we, if we thought it was going to have a long-term impact on the membership base and the customer lifetime value. It's something we would consider for sure. Charlie, this is a really exciting day for you. I wish you all the best and Godspeed to all your directors and staff and I hope you have a great future. Thank you very much Perfect. for your time. Thank you very much.